need a versatile gene delivery system that can be used for both in vitro and in vivo studies? Or a virus that can transduce a broad range of cells with high efficiency? Look no further than the recombinant adenovirus. In this video, we will show you how to clone and package adenoviruses, create seed stocks, and harvest a high yield. Recombinant adenoviruses are wonderful tools for high-efficiency gene transfer and gene therapy due to their ease of production, high transduction efficiency, and low immunogenicity. Once generated, a single adenoviral vector can be used in both in vitro and in vivo applications and can infect both dividing and non-dividing cells in a broad range of hosts. Now that's extreme versatility. Over the past 60 years, scientists have made continuous modifications to the adenovirus genome to enable it to accommodate larger transgenes and to lower its immunogenicity. The result is the popular second-generation adenoviruses that we will focus on in today's video. You can learn more about the recombinant adenovirus system at our Learning Resources Center by clicking on the links in the video description. Now, let's get started. In this video, we will cover adenovirus cloning and plasmid linearization, transfection, virus amplification, and harvesting and storing your adenoviruses. First, you'll need to clone your gene of interest into an adenovirus expression system vector. There are many commercial cloning kits that can help you speed up this cloning process, including Adeno 1 to Adeno 8 series of cloning kits that come with various tags and reporters. Using these kits, you can clone your gene of interest into the provided shuttle vector at the multiple cloning site in frame with your desired tag or reporter at the C terminus. The shuttle vector is utilized because it is easier to manipulate a smaller plasmid. The expression cassette in P-Shuttle is flanked by ICEU-1 and PISCE-1 restriction sites, which are special homing endonucleases that are unique sites within the large p adeno vector. Next, use the ICEU-1 and PISCE-1 sites to subclone your gene of interest, tag, or reporter from the shuttle vector into the p adeno vector, which contains the adenovirus genome required for virus production. Finally, transform the final ligated recombinant adenovector into adenocompetent cells and select colonies using ampicillin. Check your recombinant adenovector by restriction digest or sequence verification, then amplify and linearize it at the predetermined PAC1 sites for virus production. Use the long fragment containing your gene of interest and the adenoviral genome for transfection. Ensure you have at least 3 microgram of linearized adenovector for transfection. Now we are ready for transfection and virus production. Seek low passage HEC293 cells in 6 well plates with 2 mL of DMEM, 10% FBS, 1% penicillin streptomycin, incubate at 37 degrees Celsius. 5% CO2 so that they will be 50 to 70% confluent at the time of transfection. Transfection efficiency is highest in actively dividing cells. Therefore, transfection over 70% confluency will negatively impact the cell's ability to uptake DNA. At room temperature, prepare two solutions. Solution A and Solution B. To make Solution A, mix 3 micrograms of your linearized adenovector and 100 microliters of serum-free DMEM. Incubate 5 minutes at room temperature. For Solution B, combine 6 microliters of ABM's DNA Fectin Plus transfection reagent with 100 microliters of serum-free DMEM. Incubate Solution B for 5 minutes at room temperature. 
Now, combine solutions A and B into a single tube and incubate for 20 minutes at room temperature to allow formation of DNA and DNA fectin transfection complexes. This is your transfection solution. While you're waiting for incubation to complete, aspirate the old growth media from the six well plates and gently wash the cells with fresh serum-free DMEM or sterile PBS to remove any serum and antibiotics that could interfere with the formation of transfection complexes and increase cytotoxicity. Once incubation is complete, add 800 microliters of serum-free, antibiotic-free DMEM to the transfection solution. Next, aspirate the wash solution from the six well plates and add one mil of the transfection solution to each well. Label the plates and incubate at 37 degrees Celsius, 5% CO2 for five to eight hours. After five to eight hours of incubation, aspirate the transfection solution and replace it with two mils of DMEM with 10% FBS and 1% penicillin streptomycin. If a fluorescent marker was used, you will be able to observe the fluorescent signals 24 hours post-transfection. Examine your cells under the microscope and note the quality of cells and cytotoxicity levels. Your transfected cells should reach 80% confluency approximately two days after transfection. Subculture them from the six bulb plate into a 15 centimeter plate with 20 ml of complete media. Monitor your cells over the next 7 to 14 days for signs of cytopathicity characterized by rounded, swollen cells that detach from the plate. When approximately 90% of the cells have detached from the plate, harvest the cells and media in a 15 ml or 50 ml conical tube. Freeze and thaw the cells three times to ensure complete lysis by alternating between dry ice and a 37 degrees Celsius water bath. Great job! You have now isolated your adenovirus seed stock. Store your seed stock at minus 80 degrees Celsius until needed. With your seed stock, you can easily make high titer virus stocks. Simply infect a fresh batch of 75% confluent HEC-293 cells with the seed stock and harvest approximately 3-5 to five days later after cytopathicity has been observed. In general, up to 2-3 to three rounds of amplification will yield a titer of 1 million plaque-forming units per mil from HEC-293 supernatant. This is enough for the transduction of most target cells in vitro at 70 to 100% efficiency. Centrifuge the harvested and lysed cells at 3,500 RPM for 20 minutes in a benchtop centrifuge to pellet the cell debris. Transfer the supernatant to a new tube and add 50% glycerol to a final concentration of 5%. This is your adenovirus stock. Store your virus stock in a minus 80 degrees Celsius freezer. Excellent! You now have your recombinant adenovirus stock. To learn more on this topic, visit the link to our blog in the video description. In our next video, we'll show you how to purify and titrate your adenoviruses as well as how to infect your target cells. So, stay tuned and thanks for watching!